Welcome to the fourth in development video for S3 and in this video I'm going to show the uh, latest updates and those are basically the collision detection and wandering behavior for the enemies and let me show you that in action. Alright so let me just hit play and go to the crush sample and you'll get to see uh, basically uh, 50 enemy units all get pretty much steamrolled. And um, so that's what I just implemented yesterday, and it's pretty soon to have another video out, but I thought I should show it just because it is quite entertaining. And let's just have a quick look at that, um, the physics in general, in the profiler. Uh, so physics is my most expensive part, and I'll explain that in just a moment why that is. And the scripts themselves are pretty efficient. When shooting, it can spike up uh, quite a bit higher, or when game objects are getting destroyed and so on, then it can spike up quite a bit. But in general, the, the behavior scripts themselves are have a negligible impact on performance, So, which is very good when you consider like there's 50 enemy units and the player uh, all together. All right, so let me go back to the main menu, and uh, let me just extend that a little bit and hit play game. All right, now I have these enemy units. They spawn by proximity, basically. Well, actually, they are already spawned at the beginning of the scene, and then I just activate them when uh, they get close enough. There, there you go. You can see that the blocks are just crushing through the enemies, and you can basically play like a... <laughs> well, that didn't work. Well, probably because there's so many of them coming towards me. I wonder if I made it like a bowl, would it be like some sort of bowling game maybe? Probably would be like a bowling game, except a lot safer because you, you can't actually slip on the slippery floor. <laughs> uh, Alright, but if I run far away, uh, the enemies will lose track of the player, and then they'll just start to uh, wander uh, just aimlessly basically within a random unit sphere basically. So they'll just they'll just wander around inside of that sphere, and while they can actually keep extending, naturally they will extend further and further away from wherever they started from. Um, Alright, so, and if the player comes back closer to them, then they realize that he's there and will start pursuing again, which is about now, right? So I can just fire the block, and there we go. And, uh, and I can also pick up uh, the usual stuff and see how that performs in general. And, well, this won't be anything surprising anyway. So how, how did that look as a behavior? And, okay. So just looks for some big spikes. Alright, so that was a big spike. Very high uh, behavior update. And that's because there's a, some sort of, oh, it's a UI update thing going on there right now, which is pretty expensive. Well, that's because of stuff getting, yeah, okay. That's fine, that happens only every now and then, it's not a big deal. But otherwise, the behavior scripts themselves are very efficient. And physics is the most expensive. It's gone down because some of the enemies got destroyed. So I should really just restart that level. And then just run it again so you can see what the uh, actual physics is like with this many enemies when you start out. Alright, so, okay. There we go. Just capture that. Okay, and there you go. So physics is pretty expensive. It goes beyond 4 milliseconds of CPU usage quite a few times. It can go even higher than that. And, uh, well, I, I guess it's not really avoidable just because these are all um, uh, ragdoll physics um, uh, type of enemies. Uh, they're, the uh, rigid bodies and colliders are all disabled. They're only activated on uh, the enemy's destruction well, when they lose their health. But the thing is, there are joints in there, and joints you can't deactivate. You can only destroy them, and it's really a bother to try and uh, add them while the game is running and then set it up correctly and stuff. I'm not even sure if there's any benefit in that. You might get some stuttering if you, for example, use the bazooka to take out lots of them and suddenly you're doing that kind of operation. So that's the trade-off. Like, you can... Uh, I do have a... Um, actually, why don't I just stop that? I do have, uh, so just remember that, it was like 4 milliseconds approximately. I do have enemies without ragdoll, so let's very quickly have a look at that. Let me just change this, uh, go to the uh, game view, uh, to the game scene, 
and change the spawn group. Just take this one off, put this one on. This spawn group has um, uh, characters uh, with no ragdoll. So the enemy is no ragdoll. So let me try that one. Uh, let me just change the layout back to the profiler quickly and turn it on. And so there's no um, there's no destruction, no die animation, so they'll just sort of pause in a strange way. There, there, that's it. That's that means they're gone. Let's have a look at it. Okay. And now let's have a look at physics. So physics, while still being high, is much lower than before. Now it's around two milliseconds, can reach three in a bad situation, but uh, the previous one was getting beyond four, uh, so and this is without any ragdoll. Uh, so there's no ragdoll, all that's on there. So let me just show you what's on there. Layouts, okay. All that's on there is um, uh, basically a hitbox, a detection field, and a collision field. So three colliders only, and one on the head as well for the uh, head damage as well. And then the rest where I usually would have uh, rigid uh, bodies and colliders for the ragdoll and joints as well, there's nothing. So that just shows the difference uh, in terms of that. It's basically just having too many uh, enemies in the same area. So if you are making like for example this is for PC so it's no big deal whatsoever that much really that's really <laughs> the form of millisecond five millisecond whatever for PC isn't a big deal at all if you're spending that much on physics um, but if it was for example mobile then yeah it would be a very big deal and you would have certainly have to reduce the number of enemies otherwise it would just be uh, really slow Okay, well, uh, I think that was all I wanted to show for that, and uh, it was really simple to implement. I just made one new script and just tied it back into the event system that I have, and uh, that's it. The enemies can get uh, damaged by just throwing stuff at them. You can take the bazooka, throw it at them, and they can get crushed with that. So, for example, in uh, what I'm developing, that game Weekend Drive, um, when building pieces fall down, yes, they can actually take out uh, the uh, zombie mobs. Alright, uh, that's it, and thanks for watching.